Topic 1, Lesson 4. Herod's bloody reign, Mary Amne, I was Herod's wife. She is the Jewish queen who fell victim to Herod's paranoia. Herod's marriage to Mary Amne. I was a union born from both love and politics, but it quickly became a volatile and tragic relationship. Mary Amne, a Hasmonean princess, was not only beautiful and aristocratic, but also the link that Herod hoped would cement his legitimacy as king. By marrying her, he tied himself to the illustrious Hasmonean dynasty, a family revered by the Jewish people, and one that had previously ruled Judea with autonomy before Roman intervention. However, the marriage that began with promise and passion soon soured under the weight of Herod's relentless insecurities and suspicions. Despite his apparent love for Mariamne, Herod's position as a ruler required constant vigilance, and he grew increasingly paranoid about perceived threats, both within and outside his household. His Idumean heritage set him apart from the Jewish aristocracy, and many questioned his claim to the throne. Herod's mother, Cyprus, and his sister, Salome, harbored deep resentment towards Mariamne, seeing her Hasmonean lineage and pride as a threat to their own influence. They stoked Herod's suspicions, convincing him that his beloved wife could easily become a pawn for his enemies. This suspicion reached a tragic peak in 31 BCE, when Herod had to leave Judea for an audience with Octavian, who would soon become Augustus, in Rome. Fearing that he might not return from this politically dangerous journey, Herod entrusted his loyal bodyguard with a chilling command. If he were to die, Mariamne must also be killed. This order, driven by his fear that his enemies might use Mariamne to seize control in his absence, reflected the depths of his paranoia. When Mariamne later learned of this morbid instruction, she was horrified and repelled. Herod's declaration of love was overshadowed by this brutal plan, and her reaction was one of outrage and betrayal. Upon Herod's return to Judea, the relationship became even more strained. Despite his initial relief and joy to see her again, the gulf of distrust widened. Salome and Cyprus, seizing the opportunity, accused Mariamne of plotting against Herod, further inflaming his suspicions. In 29 BCE, overwhelmed by his own doubts and manipulated by the machinations of his family, Herod charged Mariamne with adultery, a charge likely fabricated but devastating in its implications. After a trial filled with intrigue and accusations, Mariamne was sentenced to death. Herod's grief following her execution was well documented. He reportedly fell into periods of deep sorrow and despair, haunted by the memory of his wife whom he had both loved and condemned. Yet, even in his grief, he remained the architect of his own tragedy, a king willing to sacrifice his closest loved ones in a desperate bid to secure his rule. Consider the tragic fate of Herod's sons. Herod's paranoia did not end with Mariamne. The specter of betrayal seemed to haunt him constantly, extending even to his own children. Alexander and Aristobulus, Herod's two sons by Mariamne, were raised as heirs, their education and grooming intended to prepare them for the throne. Yet, rather than serving as symbols of his legacy, these sons became victims of Herod's profound mistrust. Their Hasmonean bloodline, which could have been a source of pride, became a liability in Herod's eyes. As they grew into charismatic young men, rumors of their ambitions began circulating within the court. Enemies and rival factions within the royal household, including Herod's other wife Doris and her son Antipater, saw the popularity of Alexander and Aristobulus as a threat to their own positions. Antipater, ambitious and cunning, played on Herod's insecurities, weaving tales of conspiracy and rebellion against the two princes. The tension culminated in 7 BCE, when Herod took the drastic step of accusing Alexander and Aristobulus of treason. He brought them to Rome for a trial before Augustus, hoping that the emperor might validate his fears or, at the very least, offer guidance. Augustus, however, was disturbed by Herod's distrust of his own children and urged him toward reconciliation. But Herod's paranoia proved stronger than even the emperor's counsel. Upon returning to Judea, Herod ordered the execution of both sons by strangulation. This brutal act shocked the court and marked a turning point in his reign, cementing his legacy as a tyrant willing to eliminate even his own flesh and blood. The execution of Alexander and Aristobulus became a dark chapter in Herod's reign, highlighting the corrosive nature of his insecurity and the lengths to which he would go to preserve his authority. Tragically, the betrayal and bloodshed within Herod's family did not end there. His eldest son, Antipater, emboldened by the elimination of his half-brothers, believed himself to be the sole heir to the throne. However, his ambition outpaced his patience. Antipater hatched a plot to poison Herod, seeking to accelerate his own ascent to power. When the plot was discovered, Herod, in one of his last acts as king, ordered Antipater's execution. 
Days before his own death in 4 BCE, Herod's final condemnation of his firstborn son closed the tragic cycle of familial betrayal that had plagued his reign. Herod left a legacy of fear and bloodshed. Herod's desperate efforts to secure his throne came at a devastating personal cost. His obsession with consolidating power created an atmosphere of mistrust and betrayal, turning his household into a battlefield of suspicion and accusation. The executions of Mariamne and his sons, driven by fear and manipulated by court intrigue, left a fractured family and a kingdom engulfed in sorrow and resentment. Historians like Josephus would later immortalize Herod's cruelty and paranoia, painting him as a ruler who, despite his architectural achievements and contributions to the region, allowed his own fears to destroy those closest to him. The same king who built the magnificent temple in Jerusalem, the fortress at Masada, and the port at Caesarea, was also the king who ordered the deaths of his wife, his sons, and countless others who might threaten his reign. Herod's consolidation of power may have preserved his rule, but it left a legacy marred by violence and familial betrayal. His descendants inherited a throne tainted by blood, and his kingdom, seething with unresolved tensions, would soon face its own downfall. The years following Herod's death would see Judea descend further into chaos, setting the stage for further conflict and, eventually, Roman intervention. Herod's life thus remains a stark reminder of the price of power and the tragic consequences of unchecked ambition and fear.